how did you get into this hobby? Um, you know, I don't really know, except to say that I do remember from a young age being fascinated with the concept of ghosts. Um, I remember when I was small, my grandma, who also equally shared a fascination with UFOs as well, um, and, and, you know, the implications of that, but she once told me, I, I don't know, I was probably in second or third grade, that she fell asleep on her couch one night and woke up and there was a gentleman, um, like, apparition almost standing at the foot of her couch. And she said he was thin and wearing a suit and a, in a bowler hat. Um, and she said that he just nodded at her and then essentially vanished. And that image always kind of stuck with me because she did have, um, like me, a very vivid imagination, but she also seemed very convinced that she was awake um, and that she had seen this. And she said she did not feel any fear um, or anything because she had the distinct feeling that whoever that person was, was not there to harm her. Um, so I, I think maybe from a young age, I started thinking about um, ghosts and spirits and how a person, if indeed they are real, might get trapped um, in that realm, um, or why they might be there and what they might want, right? Um, and that's something I like to explore with my books a lot is, you know, there, there is a ghost and the ghost generally, yes, is the antagonist, but um, they're not necessarily always um, evil or dark for the sake of being dark. Often they're just trying to communicate something um, to the one person that they think has enough in common with them to listen. Um, and so, yeah, I, I can't say that I know for sure where my fascination 100% came with, but um, it's it's been here as long as I can remember. So when you're um, approaching uh, hauntings and, and, and ghosts and, and, and the alley of death and mutilation, but for, <laughs> how do you, uh, we know how you set boundaries for yourself. How do you set boundaries for your young readers? Where do, where's the line when you've gone too far and how do you know if you've crossed it? Yeah, I think this is a tricky one. Um, so for one, I will say that I don't write any gore into my books ever. That's kind of a hard and fast rule for me as a writer. Um, I, I, and I'm not saying it's not okay in middle grade. I mean, I think a lot of middle grade books, you know, can do that for me. I just personally don't. Um, I think that it's a bit of a collaborative effort because the way I write is very much to write the scene the way I feel like it should be with the scare factor that I think should be there. But then I have a very talented editor um, who will sweep in and read it and either say, oh, Lindsay, this is going to be parents with pitchforks or, oh, Lindsay, you can go ahead and push this further. I see more room for scares in this scene. Um, and then I always have to temper that as well with, again, the ghosts in my books are their own characters, right? They are people who lived a life and have a history. And I don't want to be disrespectful of that, especially because in some cases they were real people. Um, uh, in the case of the peculiar incident on Shady Street and Scritch Scratch, the ghosts in those books were actual people in Chicago. And so I want to be respectful of the fact that um, they had a story, they had a history, they had a life and whatever they're trying to communicate, I want to do it in a in a fair way. You know, when you think about it, uh, any way a ghost tries to communicate is probably going to be scary to us, right? Um, no matter what they're doing, because it's a ghost. Um, so I, I just try to temper all of these things so that there's kind of a full circle moment. I, I joke a lot that um, this is totally not a genre, but I feel like it should be. Heartwarming horror needs to be a thing because I think that's where my books would go. I mean, it sounds funny, but yes, I'm going to I'm going to take you into some dark places. I'm going to scare you. It's going to be frightening, but I promise you there are also warm fuzzies and I'm going to lead you back out into a brighter place by the end. Gotcha. So you're never going to end with, and then they all died. I am not. I am not. I do think that is another element of, of middle grade in particular that I love and that I will always really emphasize in my books is there's always hope. 
I always want to end the book with hope. I, I really don't feel comfortable leaving everyone with a grim perspective, either on what has happened or the ghost or life in general. Um, so there's, there is always going to be that ribbon of hope, even if things aren't perfect, they're not always perfect in real life. Um, but they're going to be better. Do you ever worry that uh, having put yourself out there as the spooky middle grade person, you're out there, people know that you love the ghost and ghosts, presumably if they have access to library, I know ghost haunt libraries. We've got a couple of haunted libraries right here in Indiana. There so they might pick up a Lindsay Carey book, you know, late at night while all the uh, patrons are gone. I'm like, oh, Lindsay gets it. I need someone to tell my story. Lindsay. I need one. to talk to Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that would make for some really fascinating stories when I go to schools, I think. I do, you know, I joke that I'm always, you know, keeping my eyes open for ghosts and things, but I know without a doubt, I am not nearly as brave as the characters in my books. Like, I know if my house were genuinely haunted, if we hung up this call today and something started happening uh, that convinced me that there was a spirit in my house, I would have to move. I'd probably have to move. Like I, I know I, I, it's not something I'm not open to experiencing, but I also know my limitations and I don't think I would be nearly as resourceful and brave as my characters are. Um, I'm so proud of my, my characters. I mean, they, you know, they're, this is why I like writing for a middle grade audience though. They are such a cool age group. I, I I do so many school visits throughout the year, and I'm telling you, they are some of the most empathetic, resourceful, entertaining people, right? Um, they've got one foot in childhood and, and one foot in adulthood, and that just makes them fun and, and amazing. But I can see, because this age group is so special, how these characters can sometimes accomplish things that I think many adults couldn't, including me. So, wow, you know, I, I do not mean this in any kind of uh, condescending way, because I hate when people imply that you've been writing for kids. Are you ever going to write a real book? Bro, these are real books. <laughs> um, but do you think of maybe writing an adult story for the simple reason that then you could kill everybody if you wanted? You could oh. go. Yeah, it would definitely be a different experience. I mean, I can't say that the thought hasn't crossed my mind because, um, you know, sometimes I I'm very, um, I'm very story driven, right? Uh, like when my first middle grade, when the peculiar incident on shady street became a book, um, it popped into my head, just the, the idea. And I knew right away it, it wasn't young adult. It, it wasn't adult. It, it felt very middle grade. It felt like the kind of adventure that would go over well in a middle grade story. Um, and that's, a lot of the time, what drives what I'm writing. If I were to come up with something that I felt really passionate about, but was convinced it needed to be an adult book, I I might consider writing it. Um, I'm definitely not closed off to the idea. It's more about what, um, what feels exciting to me in the moment. I don't know. Maybe I'm still on the inside. Maybe I'm still 12. <laughs> Maybe I didn't quite get away from that age range or something, but middle grade usually is what my stories end up feeling like to me. I think it's probably where I naturally fit right now. Not to say that I wouldn't eventually write something else. And I do have something coming out that is middle grade, but not spooky. So, um, and that's not something I really force off for myself before. <laughs> 